Hey everyone, my name is Ash and I make puzzles here on YouTube. Welcome to PV Inspired. This is a place where crafters, creators and artists make one-of-a-kind pieces inspired by Amazon Prime Video movies, series and characters. Today I am making a puzzle of Egg Wayne from Wheel of Time. When I first start making a puzzle, I am going to make a digital painting with my tablet based on a source image that I find. Whenever I paint, and this is for anything across the board, everything that I do, I always start on something and scrap it and then go to the next thing. And the second thing I make is always the good one. So that's what you're seeing right now is, is, is the good one. <laughs> There's many times I'll get started on something and it's just not right. And instead of trying to fix what I've done, I, I would much rather just start over. So when I'm making this painting, I'm also thinking about the composition of a puzzle. And I don't wanna have large spaces of one color. So I like to put in a lot of textures and details and make sure that when I'm using colors, I am giving it a bit more variation than maybe what might be in the source image. Because at the end of the day, I wanna have a puzzle that's fun to put together. This painting part is the part that's gonna take me the longest. I'll sit down and do a painting every night for a couple of hours and get it done within about a week. This image of Egg Wayne is, it's originally just very beautiful. Um, the look in the eyes, I had to work a long time on the eyes actually to get that gaze just right. And the background is fairly plain, which gave me opportunity to mess around with a few just sort of paint streaks here and there. Uh, and there's definitely parts of it where I want to put more detail into. So more detail into the face, more diffused background, and in the clothes I can be a little more fun and have more of a loose style. What I'm trying to communicate through this portrait is this sheer look of determination that she has on her face. So I, I hope that I've captured a bit of that or translated it at least from the still that I was working off of. When I'm done with the painting, which is a really difficult part, that's the hardest part is to know when you're done with a painting. Usually it's just when you have no more time to work on the painting, I, I print it out on a vinyl sticker. So I press print, I print it out. Usually the first print is not gonna work. <laughs> I'm gonna be checking for inconsistencies, for any kind of weird thing the printer's gonna throw at me because that's what it likes to do. When I have my vinyl sticker ready, when it's perfect or almost perfect, I will then move to adhering it to a piece of chipboard. And if you don't know what a chipboard is, a chipboard is basically cardboard, but it's pressed really firmly so you can get nice cuts and make great crafts with it. This chipboard is a medium weight chipboard and I find that it is the highest quality you can get with the easiest cut. We can go higher, but the cut will take a little longer. And if we go lower, maybe like cereal box thickness, it's just not a good puzzle. We'll go ahead and adhere the vinyl sticker to it and we'll let that sit. After we have the vinyl sticker on and adhered, there is one last step we need to do, which is lamination. And this you don't necessarily have to do, but through my experimentation, I've found that it really helps keep the paper together. Because when you're making a cut, you're gonna start having frayed edges around your paper. And while the vinyl sticker is good quality, it's nice to have just a little bit extra shield on it. So this needs to sit for 24 hours because adhesive needs time to adhere. And I like to give it a little extra time just to be safe because you don't want it sliding around or bubbling or doing any kind of weird thing that it might do because glue is strange. It's strange and I'm gonna just let it sit, leave it alone, and when I come back, it looks perfect. Now it's time, finally, finally to cut out the puzzle. And I am using a Wen scroll saw, which is 
sort of an entry level woodworking scroll saw. And it's at this point that I think back to my woodshop class in college and the woodshop safety rules, which are no jewelry, put your hair back, no hanging clothes, and wear a mask and goggles. The blades I'm using, and I've done some experimentation with this, is a jeweler blade, and it is a 0-2 thickness, and I'm also giving it a lot of play, so it's not very uh, tense. The tension on my blade is low, and it's very thin because we're gonna be making curves and working around, starting and stopping, and that already is gonna put a lot of stress on the blade, so you don't want it to be too tight. And we'll get to start cutting. I'm gonna start by getting rid of this excess cardboard on the sides and I'll trim it down to just the image. Once I have the image squared, I will go ahead and make notches. I'm gonna, for these, I'll make eight notches will have an eight by eight puzzle. So I'm gonna go about every inch and make a notch just to kind of guide myself because I'm not using a template for cutting out these pieces. I'm gonna freehand it because it's more fun that way. And after that goes, I'm just gonna start cutting and I'm going to cross my fingers mentally <laughs> and hoping that I don't make any mistakes too big, but that's the beauty about making a puzzle on a scroll saw is that you have no way of making it uniform. I certainly don't. And we're left with some really unique and interesting pieces. Even if you might think that looks like a mistake, it's something that adds to just how wonderful the final puzzle we make will be. It usually takes me about 45 minutes to an hour and a half to finish a puzzle like this. Depending on the size pieces I decide to make, and how big the image is. From time to time, I'll go ahead and take my foot off of the on switch, pull out that piece once the saw is completely stopped because I wanna keep this area neat and clean for cutting. And once I get down to that very last piece where it's just two, basically two pieces that I have to maneuver around, I am so very careful to do that right because things could get dangerous pretty fast. And when I'm done, I'm gonna dust off my machine. I like to say thank you to my electronics and my machine and uh, just send it some appreciation for doing such a good job. <laughs> I'm gonna take all these pieces out and give them a good dust because there's a little bit of a fine dust on these things and there might be a couple of frayed edges that I'll wanna just tear off. Finally, I'm done. This could have been, you know, weeks of preparation leading up to this final piece, which is a puzzle. The reason that I like puzzles and that I do puzzles is because I find them really relaxing. That's why I have a YouTube channel putting together puzzles. So it's nice to be able to, after this sort of very intense time of focus and creativity, to sit back and put the puzzle together. For practical reasons, I need to make sure that I didn't lose some piece out on the black top. And putting together this puzzle, being able to look at each piece that you make is pretty fulfilling because I get to see all of the uniqueness that maybe I had to breeze through because I was using a power saw initially. And so I can move from a mode of work into something more delicate. And we're gonna put the final few pieces into this puzzle. I am feeling good. I'm feeling relaxed because this has been a few weeks of work and here's the product. As we put these last pieces in, let's just take a minute to appreciate what I've done. I know it sounds a little selfish when I say it, but <laughs> I did do all the work, so. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Amazon Prime Video. And I'm leaving you with a piece of patience for whatever puzzle you are dealing with right now. I hope it's a fantasy one.